All right, hey. Oh my God, I'm back again. Tell your brother, tell your sister, tell your friends, all right? That's a little bit of Backstreet Boys there for you. You guys probably don't know who the Black Backstreet Boys were, but uh, they are popular when I was a long time ago. So anyways, we looked at some of the different changes earlier here in American history too for the, uh, the progressive era, and those changes involved one African-Americans, all right? And then you have changes as far as the government trying to control monopolies and trying to control business and becoming more efficient in business all right today what we're looking at during this time period from 1900 through about 1920 is uh changes for women okay and specifically there's a big change that happens for women is that they be they get the, the guaranteed right to vote in the form of a constitutional amendment okay Constitutional amendments are they're pretty they're like me like your teacher they're a pretty big deal. Um, there's only been 26 of them, so there you go. We're going to get and help you understand some of the changes women uh, that were happening for women. So women in the work workforce, industrialization. Remember, the Gilded Age is a period of mass industrialization and this industrialized era. Women start working in factories. So you have women, they assume job in factories, remember, because uh, the families were, weren't getting paid a significant amount. So women get job in factories here to uh, help support their families. So women start to become more involved in the workforce. Now that is also gonna manifest and play itself out because there's a world war that happens and women take a huge, even a bigger role in the workforce. So. Um, one out of five women are held jobs in 1900. All right, many women started having domestic jobs as far as uh, being housekeepers, maids, uh, home home set, settling people's homes, uh, work, working for families and in, in, in in their homes. All right, so women start to to work and they take on these types of jobs along with industrialized jobs. Dangerous conditions, low wages, um, and so women start to push for reform. Remember, because the the problem with the Gilded Age was that you have these long hour work, these long hours, tough working conditions, low pay. Women are starting to push for more of that. They want to take a lead role in getting uh, higher pay, better working conditions, shorter hours. All right, so they take a lead role in that. Also, during this time, you have women pushing for education. You have the use or the uh, what came about as women's colleges, right? college specifically for women. You know of a college in North Carolina that is specifically for women, Meredith College, all right? That was specifically made for it's a women's only college. Um, and so that's uh, that's something that started happening during this time period. So not necessarily unlike the, uh, the those HBCUs which were created for African Americans. Remember, Booker T. Washington took a lead role in that. With uh, he was president of the Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. So now women starting to create their own colleges because they're pushing for higher education. And one way they did that was, and it's still used today, is the Declaration of Independence. All right, this is a very uh, the document that declared the founding of our nation. All right, in July fourth, seventeen seventy six, where when it was written. So I, I teach that in American History one, which some of you took my class for that. But remember, the the one of the the, the founding or the one of the preamble of the uh, the declaration, it says, there's a quote right there for you. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Now, probably what Thomas Jefferson meant by that is men is he meant all humans. But women are saying, wait a second, it says all men. All right. What about women, too? Women at this time were discriminated against. Still, uh, it's argued and you could say that women are still discriminated against. I mean, look at. How many presidents have we had? 45 presidents 
technically 44 because one guy over Cleveland was uh, he was the 22nd and the 24th president. So he served two non-consecutive terms. But so you had 44 men become president. Women have not um, had the opportunity as of yet to become uh, to be voted into office. But, you know, hopefully that will that will change sometime soon. Uh, so women, they, they use the document to push. They're saying, look, this is what our country says, but it's not holding up that end of the bar. It's into the bargain. So the same way that a lot of people today use that that document there, those words that Thomas Jefferson wrote to say, wait a second, this is the, the founding document of our nation, yet it's not, this isn't what we're doing, even still today. But keep in mind, this is what I always try to point out to the students, this document was written by Thomas Jefferson. All men are created equal, okay? There's, some, there's hypocrisy in that, because while he says this or writes this, he was a slave owner, all right? So did he truly believe that? Um, it's, it's just a, it's a tough, tough question. Or, you know, so throughout the history of our country, there has been things that have been done that have they, not all men are, create, are, are treated equal. Right? Maybe, maybe everybody's created equal, but certainly not everyone is treated equally in, uh, in the history of our country. So a push for suffrage. What is suffrage? The right to vote. So women are pushing to be guaranteed the right to vote. Now, some states allowed women the right to vote, just like some. Uh, when we looked at those poll tax and grandfather clauses that disabled African-Americans the right to vote, some states allowed African-Americans the right to vote, but some, some did not. So with women, they're pushing for a constitutional amendment for the right to vote. Now, in a lot of instances, a lot of cases, they faced opposition. Also, um, women were pushing for prohibition, prohibition of alcohol, which I talked about uh, a couple days ago in my lecture. So the liquor industry, which is big business, all right, they feared that allowing, if you, if you own a bar, all right, you do not want women to have the right to vote during this time because they, they, your fear is that they're going to vote for prohibition. They're going to push for prohibition, which is going to cut you out of business. So that's going on. And then many men, again, men were in power in the country. So they just feared that, hey, giving women the right to vote, that's, that's going to take away from our power. Same way many uh, white Americans feared that guaranteeing African Americans the right to vote is going to take away from their power during this time. This is a three three part strategy women use for suffrage, right? The first one there is go state by state and try to push for each state to approve um, women the right to vote. So Wyoming is the first state here that allows this. So this works on some aspects. Some states did this, all right, but others, many others did not. The next strategy, pursue court cases to test the 14th Amendment. Now, the 14th Amendment is probably, I would argue, it's certainly one of the top three or four amendments in the Constitution. Uh, and it's often used in civil rights cases. So this is a civil rights case for, for women, but civil rights case for African Americans as well as women, that everyone, no matter if you're six foot six tall, have a blue striped polo shirt on, or you don't, all right, you all have, we all have, as, 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 as Americans, we all have equal protection under the law. So that's what they're, they're saying here. And they use that. The third one is the one that actually is going to, it's going to work. Push for a constitutional amendment, which would guarantee women the right to vote. So that's the one that ultimately works. All right, but so why does it work? Well, so one, they're pushing for it, but now with the impact of World War One, all right, because there were two of them, this is the first one, you have um, women taking job in factories as the men go off to war. So women during this time didn't serve as big of a role in the military as they do today. But what happens when war is happening, all right? 
Typically, males go off to war, all right, and women will assume a bigger role on the home front. This happened in World War I as well as World War II. So a mass mobilization of men to Europe in order to fight the war. Now, those jobs have to be filled in the factory. Who's going to do it? Well, women are going to do it. The president at the time, Woodrow Wilson, what he, uh, he was initially against women's suffrage. Well, now he sees, wait a second, they're making all these contributions to our war effort. Why are they not guaranteed the right to vote? So he becomes a proponent of the, uh, the, the women's suffrage movement. Uh, so he starts to support that. And so, boom, 1920 here. Now, this is 1920, so after the Constitu Constitution was written, 1787, so 30, 13, that's what, 133 years after the Constitution was written, you have a 19th Amendment, which gives women the, uh, the right to vote, all right, which basically it guarantees women the right to vote. A lot of women, not a lot, but in certain states, they already were voting and had the right to vote, but it took a 19th Amendment to guarantee women the um, the right to vote. So basically, you can look at the constitutional amendments and look at the groups that have been disenfranchised or kind of uh, suffered suffered grievances again had grievances against the country. All right? If you look at constitutional amendments, all right. 13th Amendment banned slavery. Well, who was enslaved? African Americans were. Okay. The 15th Amendment gives African American men the right to vote. All right. 19th Amendment, well, gives women the right to vote. So, all these things, um, these amendments, you just look and say, wait, our country was actually doing these bad things to these, these people. Well, yeah, the country was. It took constitutional amendments to overturn that. This is the last part. I'm not even going to go over it because it says it right there. Just going over some different constitutional amendments, uh, income tax, and these are progressive amendments. That's why I listed them at the end of the, uh, the, 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 the PowerPoint. So it's a progressive amendment, meaning that Congress collect taxes from all Americans before a lot of times the rich didn't necessarily have to pay taxes. All right. Now, now they have to pay an income tax. 17th Amendment is a direct election of senators. Senators cannot be uh, chosen. They are elected now by the people, by the constituents, which constituents are voters. 18th Amendment, another progressive amendment, has to do with the uh, social or moral improvement of society, meaning uh, the prohibition of alcohol. So if you look, if you go back, the 16th Amendment, that's an economic amendment, an economic progressive amendment, all right? The 17th is a political progressive amendment. So, and then the 18th, that again is a moral progressive amendment. And the 19th is a, a political, you could say moral um, amendment right there and all those. So look, the assignment is going to be based off this lecture. It's not going to be another Ed Puzzle assignment. It's going to be something different I'm going to have you do, uh, but I'll put it on on Canvas. Now, there's going to be a quiz I'm going to post maybe maybe later today or tomorrow, and then that's going to be it for, for this week. So remember, if you have any missing work, I've already reached out to some of you about that. Please get it done and uh, share it with me, okay? Send it to the big guy here, the guy wearing the polo shirt. So send it to me, and uh, we can get that taken care of.